guys we are back with another video i took a couple days off but i am back it is monday and i want to talk about something uh that's very important that we ran across in the flipping wheels group chat which is the three things to avoid when buying and reselling cars uh so i'm going to jump inside my screen i'm going to show you guys my word document and explain a little bit more about what i mean and how you can avoid potential issues um, when you go and look at cars off craigslist facebook marketplace and offer up or even motorcycles and dirt bikes um, I guess this would apply to that as well, uh, but just really what you can avoid to minimize your loss, to minimize your risk, and maximize your profit when you go to resell those cars for a profit. So let's jump inside my screen and I'll show you guys just a little bit more. Okay, actually we are not going to do it on my laptop. I'm not going to show you guys my screen. I'm just going to put them up right somewhere right here um, about the top three things not to do when going to look at cars. Um, so the first one is so obvious, please, I'm telling you. Don't ever, ever uh. go and look at a car at nighttime. I have learned this mistake countless of times. Um, one mistake that I've learned was I did this when I was about 16 years old and I went and bought a geo tracker three and a half hours away from me. I went to buy it, um, but I went at nighttime because I was too excited. I couldn't wait. Um, and I was 16 years old at the time and I was new to all this stuff. Um, I went with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, we went up there to Fayetteville. We, uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, if you guys don't know, we went up there to Fayetteville, we test drove it. We decided we liked it. We traded it for a four-wheeler. So we had an LTR or LTZ 400 that we traded straight across uh, for a lifted uh, GeoTracker six inch lift on 33 inch Super Swampers. Um, but I was so excited, I did not look it over. And even if I would have, I wouldn't have seen the stuff um, that it had. So it had uh, body rust, it had an oil leak and the belt flew off on the way home at about 1 a.m. at nighttime. So what did I have to do? I had to call my parents, which they were not happy about because I was on the side of the road about three hours. I think I made it 30 minutes. The belt was loose um, because the um, pulley the, was bent or warped. And every time the belt would go around, it would just do this. And I was going about 60 miles an hour and the belt flew right off. Um, so this is at 1, p 1 a.m. And I could have avoided that if I could have seen better. Um, and I don't even know if a flashlight would have helped me. So never look at cars at nighttime. That is probably the biggest one. Number two, never go um, look at cars and if it's soaking wet, and especially if it's a black car, never look at cars at you know car washes uh, when it's still soaking wet because what water can do for scratches is hide them temporarily. Um, so people will be like, hey, meet me at a car wash. Um, I've actually done this as well. Met him at nighttime. I went to a car wash. He's washing it. It's a black car. Um, when you put water on black paint, it will literally hide the scratches, the, the minor scratches, um, almost always. So if the cat has scratched up the hood, if, you know, it's got a lot of like maybe sanding marks, um, and you put water on it, it will hide it. Um, and there's a lot of other dark colors that this applies to as well, but mostly black cars. So never um, look at cars that are soaking wet or if they take photos on Craigslist and you can see that the car's wet when they took the photos, be cautious and I wouldn't even look at them, uh, but it's a good sign that it could be a scammer. And these are all things that I have learned, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, these are all based on previous experiences when I was younger, when I was 17, 18, even now, um, I still make mistakes, but um, never look at one um, that is soaking wet. From the pictures, always assume that there's probably more scratches to be done, but make sure that it's dry. Um, I know that sounds stupid, and I wanted to bring, bring that up because it's not something that some typical person would say um, that does this or that's in this market. They're not gonna be like, don't look at them when they're wet. Uh, but it is something that you should be very cautious with um, and understand. Um, and the third one is always assume the worst. Uh, you will get the most classic answers uh, when there are issues with the car. So for example, when they say there is no Freon in the car, it just needs Freon. Never assume that. It's a $20 can or $30 can at AutoZone and they would have put it in there if they wanted to sell it um, nine times out of 10. The real reason why it 
just needs Freon is because the AC compressor doesn't work or something more expensive. Um, because when you fix an AC, a lot of times it's like seven, eight, nine hundred, even eleven hundred dollars um, because of the parts and then the labor itself. You have to vacuum down the lines. So they're gonna tell you that because they don't know you and they don't care to sell it to you saying that the AC doesn't work. There's almost always a bigger issue than that. So always assume the worst. When they say, oh, the transmission's slipping, it's probably just low on transmission fluid. It's probably not. It's probably a bad transmission. Don't buy it if you don't know what to do or you don't know how to rebuild transmissions or you don't have a hookup on transmissions. Be cautious. Be cautious, guys. Um, always, always, always assume the worst. These are my experiences throughout my years doing this. Be careful. Please be careful. I wanted to make this video for you guys because it's important. Um, it's nothing crazy, but it's very important. I don't want you guys to, you know, go find cars, whether you want to keep them, you know, for the rest of your life, whether you want to um, sell them in a year now for a profit, whether you want to restore them. Well, if you want to restore them, then you probably know a little bit about cars. But um, other than that, don't do these three things, please. It's so easy to do them because you get excited and you find that cool car or you find that cool deal. Please listen to this and use these so maybe you won't end up like me on the side of the road in BFE, Arkansas, um, calling your parents at 1 a.m. telling them to come pick you up. But also, not only that, I need a car hauler because the truck doesn't run that I bought about 30 minutes prior to that. Don't be that guy. Don't buy the car that has the low tranny fluid and then you put tranny fluid in it and it's still got the low tranny fluid. Don't be that guy. Don't be the guy that bought it because it needs Freon, but it doesn't need Freon. It needs a $900 AC, AC repair. That's what I'm here for, guys. If you guys want to learn more about what we do, click the first link down below. It's the Flipping Wheels program. It is the Flipping Wheels mentorship. We're also doing the 30-day challenge. $50 off that. You can click the second link down below in my bio if you guys want to, um, you know, Learn a little bit more, but it's something that you're going to need to know because you're going to have to buy cars in the future. Just don't be that guy. Thankfully, I had these mistakes early on at like 17 and 18. So now I know not to do them. And now you know not because you watched the video. But I'm going to be getting off here. That's my rant for three things to stay away from when buying and reselling cars. Take it easy, guys.